This video is brought to you by Devout Decals, makers of reusable Catholic art for your home altar, your bedroom, and your home classroom. In the six years that I've been doing this now on YouTube, I've learned a, a few things, unfortunately. One of those is that every Lent, without fail, typically in Europe, you will find a story comes out that some bishop or some priest operating a very high-profile historic parish somewhere decides to put blasphemous art in an attempt to have a more inclusive and welcoming Lent. In the past few years, it has usually been in Germany or Austria where this has happened, which isn't really that surprising for anybody familiar with the sort of post-conciliar history of modernism. Um, one such image comes to mind of... Um, of a pig's heart last year being put on display as a sort of a allusion somehow to the sacred heart of our blessed Lord. I can't even believe a year later that those words come out of my mouth. It's so unbelievable. This year it happened as well, but this time it happened in Italy. An artist put a painting up, and I debated whether I was going to show this on screen or not. Um, but when I reported on this during Lent, for those of you who took uh, Lent and off from social media and YouTube, you didn't see this story, but when I did this video on that, I did show in one of the videos I did on this, uh, the a, a brief image of the painting. Uh, I debated doing it here, I'm not going to, but it sh depicts our Lord having been taken from the cross, and you can see the wounds, and he is having an, uh, we'll say, something done to him of a impure nature. I won't get more detailed than that other than to say it's um, also of a James Martin nature, we'll say. As you might expect, the laity in uh, Carpi, Italy, where this is happening, were, were upset about this. <laughs> they they uh, protested it. They let their bishop know. And a new twist in this story happened. The artist, quote-unquote, behind this piece, who was not a believer, but was just merely inspired by the Bible, he was inspired by the scripture, and in, to, to say what the priest said, who you'll hear from in a moment, the apocryphal text, I'm not sure what he means by the apocryphal text, because for a Catholic, something that we consider apocryphal is something very different than what a Protestant considers apocryphal. I will assume, being a Catholic priest, he tends to mean stories like uh, the Protoevangelium of James and those kinds of stories, and not like the Book of Maccabees, which is what a, which we consider scripture, Protestants do not, typically. But the artist behind this, some, uh, the, some lay person or group of lay people, uh, uh, they let the, the, the artist know how they felt about this in the most uh, illicit way possible. They tried to use physical force on him, and they actually succeeded. Now, the artist is in recovery from this. I'm hoping that he has had a moment of reflection on this, not to endorse what they're doing, because I do not endorse what the, what the laity did. And now we get the update here because of that story, that the priest of the parish has given an interview on this, and he sides with the artist. He doesn't think the art was blasphemous. I know. <laughs> I can't believe it either. But here we go. Headline from ilrustodelcarlino.it. Artist attacked in church. Bishop Castellucci. Violence is alien. The exhibition remains open. Don Edio expressed closeness to the artist and the, quote, concerned community. Quoting him, The works are not blasphemous. Anyone who wants to see harm in them is free to do so. The important thing is that dissent is an opportunity for dialogue and not accusation. He gave the most post-conciliar Vatican II synodal new church of the new advent uh, response possible. Dissent is an opportunity for dialogue and inclusion. The priest sees nothing wrong. The priest of that parish, who, as you're about to hear, approved the painting without ever the paintings in question without ever having looked at them, and then later looked at them and thought, eh, there's nothing wrong with this. He's using, he, he has the most post-conciliar 
modernist take on this. That there, if that basically, that there, if you found this, the, the artwork we're talking about troublesome, something wrong with the person finding it troublesome, not with the artist and with the art that they made. Really are two religions coexisting in the same space. So here's the interview, at least the relevant part of the interview. The, the interviewer asks, Don Ario, what are your feelings regarding such a violent act? And his response, the first feeling is of closeness to the artist to whom I wish a prompt and complete recovery. Then I express solidarity with the religious and civil community of Carpi, which is rightly lost and worried in this matter. The verbal and even physical violence which has exploded in the last weeks is alien to, to the air we breathe here. I hope the, that now the tone will really be lowered, recovering common sense and mutual respect. The, art, the interviewer cont continues, For days the exhibition has been provoking increasingly heated reactions. How did you experience them? And the response, I had not seen the exhibition in the works before the opening. I also knew that a contemporary art exhib exhibition was being organized in Carpi with the paintings of a non-believing artist who was inspired by the narrative of the Gospels and apocryphal texts. When it broke out the controversy, I wanted to understand better. I got in touch with those responsible for the exhibition. And I ascertained that there were no blasphemous or ambiguous intentions either on the part of the author or even of the organizers. Of course, I was sorry that the controversy was created, but I am also sorry for the sometimes rude tone it has taken. I limit myself to praying for those who feel scandalized and for those who insult, offend, and attack, perhaps in the name of Christian truth, forgetting that Jesus asked the disciples to bear witness to truth in meekness. He's asked, what in your opinion, why in, the, in your opinion is there no blasphemy in these works? How do you see them? Again, remember the art we're talking about here and how I danced around describing it. I'll have a link to an article that shows the image in my show notes at returntotradition.org so you can take a look. So again, why in your opinion is there no blasphemy in these works? How do you see them? His answer, I read them in accordance with the intentions expressed by the author and the curators. As a personal and original interpretation inspired by some evangelical or apocryphal episodes. After all, starting from early Christian iconography up to contemporary songwriters, artists have always proposed paths and suggestions of a non-canonical nature. Anyone who wants to see harm in us, however, is free to do so. The important thing is that dissent becomes an opportunity for dialogue and debate and not for accusations and violence. The interviewer says, however, you don't think there was some naivety in the organization in the exhibition? And the response, if before the exhibition, some of the organizers had thought about these possible readings, this controversy and even this bitterness could certainly have been avoided. But now having ascertained the intention is not blasphemous, I think the exhibition should remain open for this foreseen period. Controversy often artfully fueled is not an ecclesial method and cannot influence pastoral choices. At the beginning of June in Carpi, as had already been planned for some time, the artist's construction site will be held. The diocese will invite artists to discuss religious themes in the spirit of the synodal work. And, quote. And he's asked if they're going to close it prematurely or close it early, and he said no. And then they go on to other things. But the invoke synodality as to why they're going to continue showing and why it's okay to, to have blasphemous evil art that attacks the very personhood of our Lord. Attacks his dignity at the most, the most unbelievable and unspeakable ways. It's truly, truly remarkable that somebody like that managed to get through the seminary and become a priest. But remember... We've heard this many times. In Europe, it's true. In North America, the Central and South America, it's true. That the powers that be weed out Orthodox men from the seminary. If you're seen praying a traditional breviary or you have a little too much of a devotion to the Holy Rosary, you're often removed from seminary. Benedict helped fix a lot of that. That's why you now have much more conservative men in the seminaries. But even now, they still try those things. I know, because I've spoken with men who have been seminarians in the recent past and were expelled for being too orthodox. We have the situation where those who control the reins of power in the church, in most levels, 
fundamentally don't have the faith. I don't know how else to express this idea. This isn't merely bad taste in art. This is something has gone horribly wrong in the wiring of priests who would sh who would look upon art as I've been tried to describe it for you and said, this is fine. This isn't blasphemous. Oh, the intent is fine. It never occurs to people that pe that somebody who would depict art of the kind of that kind who create something and would spend the time it takes. And those familiar with the artistic process, whether it's written art, music, drawing, that those people, that it is a pouring out of the soul into what you're doing for most people, unless you're doing it for purely commercial purposes. But even then you can tell when you deal with art that's made for purely commercial purposes. And it art reflects in some way the condition of the soul. It never occurs to that priest and to others that a person who would make such artwork would probably have no problem deceiving people as to its intention, including themselves. Remember, one of the most dangerous kind of lies we ever tell is the lie we tell to ourselves. What do you think of this? Are you surprised that um, people tried to put their hands on that artist? Or successfully, when in this case, more so than just that? Are you surprised? Do you understand where they're coming from? I'm curious what you think about the story. So let me know in the comments, please. Hit like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. So to sharing this on social media, that helps too. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.